The idea that you need to focus on the squeeze or on the mind-muscle connection has become super popular, even within the pop science field. You can contract a muscle very hard. Chances are you will be able to generate hypertrophy and strength gains pretty easily in that muscle. However, you might be surprised to find out that the jury is still out on whether or not this is actually beneficial for muscle growth. Welcome on, people. We're back. Milo Wolf here, soon to be doctor, with Wolf Coaching. And today we're talking about the mind-muscle connection and whether or not it's actually beneficial for building muscle. You might be shocked to find out we only have one study on this. And this study was performed by Schoenfeld and colleagues a few years ago. In the introduction, the authors do a good job of pointing out that there is some evidence suggesting that adopting an internal focus, like focusing on what the muscle is doing, like squeeze that muscle as a cue, has some evidence showing that it might increase surface EMG or surface electromyography. Conversely, at the time of publication and at the time of this video, there's actually quite a convincing body of evidence suggesting that adopting an external focus, something like get the weight up or being explosive or focusing on the outcome of the movement more so than how it feels internally, that seems to be beneficial for performance. So while there was a ton of data about performance being improved when adopting an external focus compared to an internal focus, hypertrophy might be a different story. And maybe this increase in activation as measured by surface EMG could lead to more hypertrophy when adopting an internal focus of focusing on that muscle basically the mind-muscle connection. So what did they do in this study? Well, they took about 30 participants and assigned them to one of two groups. Both groups performed both the standing barbell curl and the leg extension exercise. But one group focused exclusively on an internal cue of squeezing that muscle. And the other group focused exclusively on an external cue of lifting the weight. Both groups performed three weekly sessions on non-consecutive days across eight training weeks. While the authors did mention that eccentric durations were generally kept around two seconds, the tempo with which participants lifted wasn't super controlled. Otherwise, the participants were free to do as they pleased in order to best focus on either the internal cue or the external cue. All sets were completed until concentric momentary muscular failure. In other words, ending a set when you actually failed a rep. So these folks trained pretty hard. This study's participants were untrained. The cue given to participants in the internal focus group was squeeze the muscle. On the other hand, for participants in the external cue group, the focus was get the weight up. As far as measurements of body composition went, the authors took measurements of vastus lateralis and rectus femoris thickness, thickness of the elbow flexors, and finally, body fat percentage, skeletal muscle mass, and body weight. As far as strength went, they assessed strength using isometric knee extension and elbow flexion strength. As far as hypertrophy outcomes went, the results were actually quite mixed. There was a significant difference in favor of the mind-muscle connection group for elbow flexor and muscle thickness, but all other differences, although non-significant, leaned in favor of the external focus group. Likewise, for strength, although there were no significant differences, differences generally leaned in favor of the external focus group. When you see these findings, you can kind of form one of two interpretations. Interpretation number one is that an internal focus and focusing on the mind-muscle connection is better for growth. Indeed, they saw significantly better growth in their elbow flexors. And when it comes to why they didn't see more lower body growth, the author speculated that potentially it could be because participants and humans in general have less efferent control or nervous system control over their lower body compared to the upper body limbs. And so maybe the participants simply weren't trained enough in order to be able to focus on the mind-muscle connection and activate their quads to a greater extent when focusing on the mind-muscle connection. If they were able to and they were more trained, perhaps then they would have seen more quad growth as well in addition to the increase in bicep growth. So interpretation number one is basically that, yeah, focusing on the mind-muscle connection will increase your hypertrophy, but it may be the case that you need to be quite trained for you to take full advantage of this training strategy. Interpretation number two, which I am slightly biased towards, I would say, is that differences were generally close to null and mostly lean in favor of the external focus group. And so maybe the significant difference in elbow flexor thickness was simply noise and maybe not worth reading too much into. The reason I am a bit more biased or leaning towards this interpretation is because we do have a pretty extensive field of study showing that focusing on the outcome of a movement or an external focus seems to yield better outcomes as far as performance goes, as far as strength improvements go, 
compared to focusing on an internal cue like the mind muscle connection. So if very consistently focusing on the outcome of the movement yields better strength outcomes, part of me thinks that that might also result in better hypertrophy outcomes. Here's a few caveats to the results of this study. First of all, like I mentioned, tempo wasn't super controlled. As the authors hypothesized in the introduction, focusing on an internal cue or mind muscle connection can increase activation of certain muscle groups. Now, a more recent study actually tried to look at activation, comparing an internal to an external cue, like for example, my muscle connection versus lift explosively, when lifting as explosively as possible. What did they find? Well, when participants just lifted as explosively as possible, the cue that they focused on didn't actually change muscle activation at all. So it may be the case that when you're lifting very slowly or very controlled, focusing on target muscle could increase activation a little bit. However, when you're actually lifting with decent intent and relatively explosively, it may not actually matter anymore as far as activation goes. It's important to know that activation and growth are not the same thing. Caveat number two, this study only looked at isolation exercises. It's unclear how this would generalize to compound exercises. I could actually see a case wherein by focusing too much on a single muscle group during a compound exercise, your overall limiting performance which then can limit the stimulus that you get for other muscle groups. And so I think generally for compound exercises, it may not be worth focusing too much on my muscle connection of a single muscle group. Now that the boring science part of this video is over, let me talk about all that matters. And that's my N equals one experience. Insert random platitude about how everyone is an individual and what works for me may not work for you, bro. You know, you do you. The reason I bring that up is because a lot of people justify a lot of dumb shit by saying that they're individual. And sometimes it's absolutely true. A lot of the time it's just because they don't really want to listen to reason, really. Anyways, here's my experience switching from an internal focus to an external focus. So a few years ago, back in, I want to say 2020, I was actually focusing very consistently for about a year on the mind-muscle connection. I wasn't really focusing on the outcome of the movement, obviously still using good technique, but I wasn't focusing on being explosive or lifting the weight as quickly as possible or that sort of stuff. I was exclusively focusing on feeling the muscle groups I was training while training them. Eventually, I decided, you know what, it's been a while now, let me try and focus on being explosive on the concentric phase of each repetition. What I found, to be honest, is that my mind muscle connection didn't decrease by that much, but I was able to do a lot more reps. I remember doing face pulls and I was using a weight for, I wanna say about eight or 10 reps. And I switched my focus from a mind muscle connection to more so being performance orientated. And I found that that weight went from being hard for eight to 10 reps to being quite easy for about 15 reps or more. So I found that when focusing excessively on my muscle connection, it actually substantially reduced how much weight I was able to lift. Now, whether or not that's negative for hypertrophy, I couldn't tell you for sure. We only have this one study and I'm not gonna oversell my own individual anecdote. However, for me, given that there's only one study on this topic, and as I mentioned, it's not all that compelling, and we have a lot more evidence looking at strength and external focus, where focusing on the outcome of the movement is beneficial for strength, I would rather go for an external focus over an internal focus, especially when a mind muscle connection tends to reduce how much I'm able to lift pretty substantially. Anyways, what are the takeaways here? What should you focus on while training? Takeaway number one, the mind muscle connection or an internal focus probably makes little to no difference to your muscle growth compared to an external focus, all else being equal. Number two, it may be the case that the more trained you are, the more you're able to tap into that mind muscle connection and potentially see a benefit from it in terms of muscle growth. Number three, we only have one study comparing focusing on the mind muscle connection to focusing on an external cue. So it's not really clear yet which one is better for muscle growth. Number four, for compound exercises, I would typically recommend an external focus, focusing on technique, focusing on being explosive during the concentric. For isolation exercises, you can go either way. If you have a strong preference towards an internal focus, focusing on a muscle connection, you can go for that. I would say generally, I would still recommend an external focus over an internal focus, even if your goal is muscle growth, but preference plays a role here. I don't think it makes a huge difference. So if you have a preference towards focusing on the feel, that's probably fine too. Number five, we definitely need more evidence in this field. We only have one study looking at hypertrophy, and this is something that we need a lot more evidence on. 
considering how many people actually use this and care about it. So if you're in a university and you're thinking, eh, I want to do some science, consider doing it on this topic. That would be very cool. Anyways, that's the video. If you liked the video and you learned something, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. If there are any topics that you would like to learn more about, please leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see. And I'll see you guys, my viewers, in that next one. Peace.